speaks on enterprise scheduling, security, automation topics, IBMI technology and the Help Systems products and hosts technical presentations on a variety of automation topics. He is the author of the Help Systems IBM Marketplace Survey and has written articles on automated operations, security, cloud computing, and business intelligence for leading trade journals and newsletters. He was named an IBMI champion in 2016, 17, and 18 for over three decades of advocation and thought leadership on the IBMI platform. So welcome, Tom, how are you today? Thank you, Stacy. I'm doing great. Good. So and next we have Tim Dunn. Tim is currently the president of Harris Data where he has spent three and a half years as a 20-year veteran of the software industry, he has led and participated in dozens of global business process development assessments for multi-billion dollar organizations. He's constructed the framework for scope of works for multi-million dollar global enterprise software deployments and was a representative on the steering committee for several of those implementations. During his career, Tim has participated in or directed efforts in the area of sales, support, service, pre-sales, product development, business development, finance, and legal. <laughs> On a more personal note, um, Tim and his wife celebrate 30 years of marriage next week. So welcome, Tim, and congratulations on that. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. That is great news. Well, we're excited awesome. to be with you here today to share um, eight items related to ERP systems. And before we get into that, I'll talk a little bit about the IBM I Marketplace Survey we do at Help Systems to help uncover what's happening around this platform and the operating system which Harris Data uh, runs on. Um, so we did this survey again this last fall in 2017. We had 650 people from around the world fill it out from a variety of companies and a variety of size organizations, as you can see on the right, from small companies, less than 100 employees, to large companies, over 10,000 plus employees. So a great, great uh, variety of customers taking the survey. We also had a variety of industries that participated in the survey, but ironically enough, in today's world, still the manufacturing area, the distribution area, represents over a third of the customers that took the IBM I Marketplace study, and that's kind of really the targeted marketplace that we're talking to, talking to today. Obviously, Harris Davis does do other things besides these two um, industries, but certainly that is a major target. The other thing we asked customers about was, you know, what application they ran, um, and this points to, if we look at the area of the uh, written in-house applications that there's a lot of homegrown applications or in-house applications that are developed by customers. Over 70% of the customers taking the survey do some form of in-house development where they're working on their own applications or they've augmented other applications. And then we roll into the 27% area where there's a lot of applications that people have never heard of running on IBM I, different suppliers out there <coughs> providing this technology. So, our agenda for today is to talk about why would you consider switching from your ERP? Is this going to actually solve our problems that we're having? Have we made the most of our current system? Does the software fit our values for our organization? Will I switch to uh, and be more or too as disruptive a switch from this platform? Are these vendors focused on our needs? What platform fits our long-term strategy? And how will we measure cost versus benefit with a new system. So we have a lot to cover, Tim. In <laughs> 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, we better get rolling. So Tim, why would somebody want to switch their ERP? That's a, uh, that's a loaded question for sure. Okay. Uh, there's many factors that could give a company reason to explore changing their ERP system. And hopefully today in the few minutes we have, we'll be able to help direct people toward looking at that decision primarily through the lens of the business reasons of, versus starting with the software and moving toward the business reasons. So at Harris Data, we never want anyone to switch from our ERP to a, another ERP software. But at the end of the day, uh, ERP has been around a long time and ERP is for the most part ERP. Some applications may be a bit better at some things than others, but 
What I would say is uh, you really have to challenge your organization as to the, the why. Okay. Uh, it's easy to say, let's switch. Uh, but you need to realize uh, <laughs> what you're about to sign up for. Right. You know, recently I was talking to a, a customer that was referring to ERP implementations that he had experienced in the past, and he made the comment, I've been through two of these now through my career, and my wife has told me I cannot sign up for another. <laughs> So it, it gives you an example of how exhausting it can be. On it's not just the business impact, it's the personal, it's the personal impact. impact. And, you know, we've been doing this for 45 years, and we look for ways to keep our customers on the platform uh, with innovation, continuous improvements to the software. We offer unique things in the industry so that uh, we help them to get value out of what they've done and they don't need to look around. Okay, excellent. All right, let's turn our attention back to the uh, marketplace survey. One of the questions we asked our customers was, what are your top concerns as you plan your IT environment in 2018? And I've just re put rectangles around the topics that kind of fit into this whole why people are considering switching ERPs. And they're looking for modern applications. They, they're, they're, they have a lot of younger workforce members coming in now that aren't used to green screens. As a matter of fact, they get scared when they see it. They go, what is that, right? And then, of course, IBM skills is certainly something that people have to be concerned about. Uh, reduce, reducing their IT spend, how can I get more profit out of the technology that I have? And then things like business intelligence, mobile access, and then even, you know, one of the things I always say, there's two things on your CIO's mind, and that is security and what can I put in the cloud. And today, everybody thinks they can fix their problems by putting it in the cloud, right? I mean, that's solve all my problems that way. Um, and then the other thing you should know about IBM I is there's a lot of different languages today. It's not just all RPG. There's still a lot of RPG on the platform. It's not going away, but there's a lot of SQL. There's a lot of Java. People use .NET, PHP, and then even open source today is very popular on IBM I, and I probably should have included that slide in today's presentation, but you know, after all, we're talking primarily about ERP. So let's get... Um, to the other side of things, one of the changes people are looking for is better business intelligence and at Help Systems we have the SQL solution that, um, that Stacy works with and this gives us the ability to modernize your data. I often say one of the issues with modernization is people are getting the same green screen query out of IBM I and it really doesn't have to be that way. You can have mobile access and see your data in dashboards and in and, and, uh, browser type interfaces. And then we even can keep the data on IBM I with SQL Data Warehouse. So this is just an example of a dashboard that could be running your ERP system showing sales and cost of goods uh, going out the door and keeping up on your inventory. And this is IBM I data running your business. Another area that we see people wanting to modernize is their document management. And of course, there's a lot of documents in purchasing, uh, you know, invoicing, credit memos, bills of lading, things that we see in a lot of manufacturing, distribution, ERP uh, businesses that need to be electronically managed and integrated with the ERP system, and that's what we're talking about with document management at Help Systems, the ability to scan things in, uh, uh, even take those traditional green screen reports still and bring them into the technology, but include PDFs and spreadsheets and all those technologies around IBM I, Windows, Linux platform. All right, getting back to you, Tim, and next question is, is this going to actually solve our problems? Making the switch, is it going to solve the problems? Well, it's interesting in, in looking at the few slides that you showed and, and realizing that we have customers out there that are, are using some of those peripheral applications to uh, our ERP system. Uh, there's a lot of value in being able to solve specific business problems um, to give you the more modern view into the, the data mm -hmm. uh, just by adding incremental applications to your ERP system like the ones you, you illustrated. But acquiring new ERP software could actually exasper, exasper, exacerbate your yeah. company's challenges. Sure. It could make it worse. So instead of being the cure-all that a good demo or marketing brochure can lead you to believe, again, I would say consider first something like a low-risk, tiny investment rather than jumping in with both feet. Okay. Uh, what I mean by that is take a high-level and holistic view of the business from the corporate strategy down into your competencies. You don't really need to spend more than maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to to investigate what's really going on inside your organization and, and whether you can solve the problems that you have in your business with ERP. You know, we've instituted a program called HD Vitality. 
okay. that gives companies the ability to do that. And a program like that would help you identify your pain points and then make recommendations based on your business needs and then you can decide to move forward in any direction from there. If you go forward with the ERP you have or a new investment, you should look for someone to apply targeted resources to work with you to deliver value to the business via the software. And we do that using an agile methodology. What's nice about the agile methodology is we offer incremental measured success. So for example, our program could be used with existing clients that are looking to get more out of what they currently have with us. Uh, they could be deciding on the value of an upgrade. Okay. Uh, it also helps with prospects and it can be used on the front end of new projects for ERP. So uh, it's, it's really about understanding at a business level. Yeah, so before you make the, the change, let's, let's understand where the business pain points are. I like, that's a great way of looking at it. Um, so have we made the most of our current system and are people properly trained? What are you thinking about when, when, in that area? So what we see a lot is it, people do at times miss a piece of the puzzle of making their company more efficient. So they, they may be missing a module. Uh, there may have been specific business needs that they didn't address in the current configuration of their software. Okay. So it may just be a matter of understanding and mapping the two together. What do we need and can the current platform actually do this for us? Maybe new users that come into the organization have never been properly trained. You know, new software is not necessarily the answer, um, which, it, you know, it's a huge investment and it could be the answer, mm -hmm. but I, I think before people jump in, there's a lot of different things they could analyze before they make that decision. Again, by taking a step back and understanding what's causing the problem is really imperative. I'll give you a quick example. I was touring a manufacturing plant of one of our customers and we arrived in the packaging and shipping area. Okay. And the owner who was providing me the tours, he stopped abruptly and he looked around. And then he said, three people didn't show up today. Can you help with that? Well, unfortunately, ERP software cannot help with that. Okay. And so hopefully you see my point. Right, your point, yeah, the point is is that, you know, and, and we see this in the industry with our software. It's, I like to call it dustyware, where you're using about 5% of the software because you've got all these other problems that you haven't solved around it. Exactly. Okay. So uh, getting back to the study again, and, and uh, have we made the most of our current system? And, and one of the things that we ask customers is, how much green screen do you still have? And there's still over a third of the customers out there that run business applications on IBM I that are all green screen. And I always tell everybody, that's your choice. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, because you can modernize these applications. There's a lot of great knowledge that's been built in and tribal knowledge in these ERPs that have been around for many years, they're hard to switch out of. And people underestimate that. So train your staff better to your point and re review opportunities for productivity gains. What can I do if people don't show up? How am I gonna run my business with your example there at the end? It's very important. So then what do you mean by does the software fit our values? That's an interesting one to me. Yeah, so I, it's really about does the software vendor align with our values okay. on this one. You know, the software itself could be a reflection of the organization that developed it, but to me this is the big question you would need to ask. Ask yourself, ask your organization. You know, you could look at consultants. Uh, you could have a consultant that might improperly advise you to spend an enormous amount of time with a, an evaluation process that takes months. Uh, it would include big, you know, RFPs and endless software demonstrations. But at the end of the day, ERP has been along, around for a long time. I would recommend spending your time and energy on references. You know, talk CEO to CEO. Right. You're going to make an investment, talk to the CEO of another company, that's worked with that supplier for many years. And that, needs, that needs to be the, the focus. And, and, and when that discussion's going on, it should be, what do they like to do business with? Do you enjoy doing business with them? And could you stick it out with them for a long time? And have you, and why? Yeah. So Harris Data, we're, you know, we're family owned and operated, and, and we have a, a set of core values we've stuck by for the 45 years that we've been in business is just open, honest, reliable, fun team that's results oriented. We want to maintain our brand's reputation. You know, that culture fits very well in the SMB space. Right. But maybe not so much in the Fortune 100. I don't know. You know, maybe. We yeah. like the sector we serve. Well, I think the important point there, Tim, is when you venture into an ERP vendor, 
you're going to be with them for many years. Exactly. You don't want to make the switch every decade, exactly. for sure, right? So how disruptive will a, new, will a new system be to the organization? Well, it depends. I mean, it could turn your business upside down. What I would say is to mitigate risk, you'll want to look for a provider that's going to get you live on the software with a minimally exceptional product that's going to allow you to operate your business. Then you want to make sure that their model is to deliver one piece of additional value at a time as your business dictates. Mm -hmm. So don't overwhelm me with functionality. Get me live, operational, and then bring along additional added functionality as I can consume it as a, as a company. Uh, that's how to keep the company in sync, right? Sure. So partner with someone that offers minimal disruptions to your business, delivers value at each investment, allows you full control of the timing and your spend, and the risk is very low this way, very low. Good, good, all right. Are these vendors, they focused on your needs or our needs as a, as a customer that's looking at the ERP? Right, this is a question that you know, customers should ask themselves. There's, there's enough horror stories out there regarding ERP implementations that while in the beginning of the process there may have been good intentions, but it's really at the end, end of the day, it's your business and your resources that are gonna get dragged through the glass if this thing doesn't go well. So look for someone that offers a value-centric implementation, something like a customer bill of rights like we would offer that shifts the balance of power from the vendor to the customer. It should okay. be very easy to do business with these people. Find someone that has a simple licensing model, solid history, good reputation. If you're out there and you're looking at different suppliers, if you're looking at a publicly traded company, read their SEC 10K filing. You'll learn very quick where they're, you know, directionally want to go, what they're really up to, what motivates them. If it's a privately held company, meet with the owners. Really, really get to know them and, and where they want to go and is it in your best interest or are they working and operating in their best interest. And if they give you references, check them out, right? That's right. I mean, that's probably one of the bigger issues we see is that we give out references and you spend a lot of time as a software vendor making sure that customers are happy with you giving references, but then a lot of customers don't call. You right. give them the references and they don't call because they're scared to interrupt this other business, but it's important you do that. So what platform fits our long-term strategy? Yeah, another, another good question as you're thinking about, as you mentioned, you know, this is something that you're gonna do for at least a decade. So, and, and can we plan what's gonna be out there in the world of information technology 10 years from now? Probably not so much. No. Not, not at the speed it's moving, but give me an example. Harris Data has been a long-term partner with IBM, and our ERP software was built to run on the IBM I. Uh, the recent announcement of Google further partnering with IBM for I on their cloud platform yeah. validates the power and reliability of the IBM I and the Power 9. So with that said, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, any decision should be based on your corporate business goals. So the IT strategy should be designed to support those goals and never be independently developed. So, you know, companies and, and leaders of those companies should be wary of decisions being made based on what's the most familiar or favorite platform of the users or IT. I think businesses are wising up to this, and that's probably why SaaS is getting so much traction. Yeah. Um, you know, your long IT, uh, long-term IT strategy should be supportive of your business strategy and not the other way around. Okay, excellent. Well, let's take a look back at IBM I again from the study. One of the things we do is we ask people about how much core business they run on IBM I, and, and you can see from this it's, about 75% of the businesses on IBM I run over 50% of their core business applications on IBM I. And that is really a staggering number when you think about it, that these companies that run on IBM I, it runs their business. And there's a great reason why they do that because of its reliability. The other thing that we need to think about, there's over 120,000 customers worldwide using IBM I somewhere. And um, there's a clear roadmap for this technology, so it's not going away. Uh, there will be another operating system time, sometime next year in 2019, and there's plans for next. And there's also this long history of IBM I not um, divorcing their customers as they make major uh, technology changes. I think about things from SIS to RISC and you know, going from 48 to 64-bit technology, and customers doing things like over the weekend switching to technology, no big deal. 
whereas other suppliers in the market, they lost a lot of customers because they couldn't go from 32 to 64-bit technology, for example. So then they also, the support, IBM, if you look at their long history of supporting this platform, out until 2028. So they're already thinking uh, out 10 years on this technology. I know they just released Power 9. Power 10 is already in the works, and that we'll see something probably in another three years. Very exciting, some of the things that they're stepping into. They just deployed power at a large um, supercomputer technology, and I can't think of the, uh, Oak Ridge, I think, is the name of the supercomputer technology that they just deployed using the same Power 9 GPUs. Now, quite a few more, like hundreds of thousands of processors, but quite interesting. The other thing people are worried about is, you know, are, are people leaving the platform? Well, you saw in the beginning of today's presentation that about 33% of the IBM I marketplace is distribution and manufacturing. Those are businesses that are very traditional. They're sticking around. They're staying on IBM I. And then the other thing that we captured from the survey is that there's almost 24% of the people on IBM I that are expanding their footprint. And one of the things we don't hear on this platform is we don't hear about a lot of performance issues. We don't hear a lot about security issues, stability. It's just simply one of those, pro you know, I always hear people talk about it as being the technology runs in the corner of the data center and it's available all the time. So very reliable platform, but as we look at the, you know, the cost versus the benefit with new, sec new systems, new technologies, what are your thoughts on that, Tim? Well, <clears throat> real quick, I want to go back to the, uh, the comment you made about you know, the, the stability of the platform. And in the space we're in, in this SMB space, right. you know, I meet with a lot of business owners, small business owners, medium business owners, you know, privately right. held companies, and the owners love the platform. And they love an application that runs well on that platform because their business runs. They don't have to worry about it. Right. It's just run. And, and they've said that to me time and time again. I don't have to worry about it. They get enough to worry about. It. Right, because they're supplying parts to people or distribution, whatever it may be. Their suppliers depend on them delivering. Right? And they, can't, they can't afford to have the system go down for a moment. So. Okay. So how do you measure the cost versus the benefit with a new system? You know, I think you have to ask, how will an ERP partner ensure they can reduce risk and be minim minimally disruption of our business? So how are they going to offer that? Uh, do they have reasonable fees? Is it a value-driven implementation methodology? Do they offer continuous improvement? Is there timely and effective training that's going to accelerate the return on our investment? Those are things you need to think about and challenge the supplier you're looking at. What you want to know is, is there flexibility in their services and software licensing that allows you to control the costs over the long term? Sure. You know, are, you, are they going to audit the daylights out of you like some of them do, just because they need to boost up earnings for their quarterly performance? Mm -hmm. you know, do they come along with a five-page master services agreement with a 20-page statement of work just to determine the business processes that they're going to turn upside down in your organization? Is it really necessary? You know, if the software works, it shouldn't take an army of consultants to, number one, help you select the ERP, and number two, they shouldn't be living in your four walls for several years to help you deploy the technology. Well, the cost of deployment of the software should be a fraction of the license cost, right. not a multiple. And unfortunately, in the ERP industry, deploying the software has been a multiple. Yeah. At Harris Data, deployment costs are fractional. And you know we we like to boast that as a differentiator of doing business, and that, that's one of the things that's going to keep your cost of ownership way down. But look for ways to accelerate value. Right. I think that's that's a really good point. Um, we've seen from help systems perspective, we almost laugh when somebody says they're leaving the platform, and yet they don't really have a clear picture of when they're leaving, and uh, those those customers will hang around for decades sometimes trying to switch and then even pull the plug after spending millions of dollars trying to, to, to move off a platform that's running their business. And speaking of that, you know, one of the questions we ask customers on IBM I is what is their view of the return on investment on this server? And it's kind of a little bit of a touchy-feely question in the way that it's said, but, you know, 94% of the customers out there feel like they're getting a great return on their investment, or 93%. We've had this question for four years, so we've seen the number between 92, 93, and 94% uh, every year. 
And so they're thinking about total cost of ownership, which is more than just buying the ERP and buying the server. It's all the other, how many, you know, as you scale up this platform, how many more servers do you have to buy? How many more components do you have to buy that are outside of the original scope of the project? And then think just little things like reliability, and then scalability, and then securability. And security is certainly on everybody's mind today, especially in IT. So it's important to think about those things too. And you know, this platform is great in relationship to all those factors. So Tim, I want to thank you for uh, sharing your story around ERP. And um, I'm not sure if we have any particular questions or maybe some additional any additional points that you might have today about. Um, doing business with Harris Data or thinking about switching ERPs? Um, you know, I, I think if I was to summarize it, it's, it's really focus on the business, focus on what's most important to you and why you're doing this, challenge your organization to how disruptive do they want to make their lives as they ask you for new capabilities because they're getting hounded, you know, at all levels of the organization by software suppliers with, you know, the latest gadgets that are out there. And do these gadgets really you know, change my right. world in a positive way, or are they just going to disrupt my world and, you know, add costs to the business? Make sure that you find someone that's easy to do business with and that's been around and, and is looking to, to be a true partner and, and make it easy to do business with you. Right. I mean, it's just, uh, to me, it's not a technology decision, it's a business decision. Absolutely. Right. So at Help Systems, we help customers out with a lot of cybersecurity technologies, automation, and business intelligence and document management. Really, to me, it's all about productivity today. What can we do to make you more productive? And I think that that's true with ERP, is how can we look at our business and things that we're doing manually today, how can I put technology around it to improve our productivity? I think in the global economy of things, the, world, the, the U.S. economy, the Canadian economy, and other parts of the world that are highly automated ready, we have to even look for more automation to stay competitive around the globe. And then we look at Harris Data, what do you guys do? Well, you know, we've been doing this uh, partnership with IBM for a long time and our ERP software runs on the eye very effectively. There's a lot of capabilities. It's, it's a complete and holistic um, packaging. It's, it's available modularly. Mm -hmm. More recently, over the past several years, we've developed new web-based cloud technology that uh, has a tremendous amount of automation and rules and provides our customers the ability to manage the application by exception okay. um, versus having the software manage their life. Mm -hmm. They get to go in and, and just look at what's going on, check a few alerts, and, and let the robots do their work. Uh, that that uh, application uh, available on the web today is known as our human resource information system, so it's for HR and payroll. And we do, uh, we do have an early adopter program in the works for our financial management applications. So watch for those to be released into the cloud soon. Um, we also offer CRM capabilities for okay. those that want to get into sales and marketing automation or service and warranty management. So very complete offering, a uh, couple different platforms depending on uh, where people want to be. Uh, we do realize that uh, the cloud is important and more people are asking for it. So we're, we're putting a lot of effort into making applications available in that platform. Okay, excellent. I mean, that's a big question in a lot of people's mind, but you can still do on-premise and, and continue to do that with Harris Data. Absolutely. So that's great. And again, with a lot of privately owned companies, they want to keep the data on-premise, on do. don't they? They absolutely they do. They really do. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us on the uh, webinar today uh, with, with Harris Data as we talked about eight items to consider when potentially switching your ERP, and we hope that uh, you've enjoyed today's webinar. Make it a wonderful day. Tim, I want to thank you and your staff for hosting us and literally hosting us from um, Brookfield, uh, Wisconsin, in the Milwaukee area. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us join you. Thank you, Stacy. Thanks, guys. It was a great, great, uh, great discussion. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have, have a great day.